Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hello ladies and Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Brendan Lee in support of consciousness and skill worldwide. You're invited to check out my website thebrendanlee.com. In this video I want to talk to you about suicide. I want to talk to you about some rough stuff. Well, the general reaction is it's pretty rough as far as I can tell. I want to talk to you about suicide. Now, this comes from an old apprentice who was with me way back, you know, when we were apprenticing and I was a senior apprentice uh, back in the day, probably around 2010. He's like, could you say some stuff about suicide? I thought about it. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so let's see. So let's dig into it. Uh, I have never, I do not have any experience killing myself. I'll just put that right there. You see, because I'm still alive. That's a bad joke. Um, but I do have some experience with states, emotional states, and emotional states that people consider very painful. And an understanding of the types of thoughts and experiences that can run through one's mind uh, when they're considering ending their own life. See, so I've I've experienced that before. Now, and I'm okay with that. Now the, so let's see, what could I say about suicide that would make a difference and or make, you know, have a perhaps positive impact or an empowering impact? I, I want to empower people in this domain and or open up some, you see, I'm about consciousness and skill. So consciousness is like, what is it? And the skill part, how do I relate to it effectively? You know, um, so first of all, we could consider that suicide, it seems like we have a natural proclivity as human beings. We want, we want shit that's good, if I'm going to break it down, and we avoid shit that's bad. Shit that's bad, we say no, we avoid that, and we go towards what's good. Now, sometimes in our experience, we can have an experience of our own selves that is less than desirable. And some people have an experience of their own self that is so bad and likely so painful that they, they decide to end their life, their own life, by their own means, you know, by whatever means they, you know, usually some physical, they got to do something to their body to fuck it up so they die, basically. And so they decide to do that. So likely, I have never heard of anybody committing suicide because their experience is awesome. Or because they're having a good time at life. Or because they feel good all the time. I have heard of people committing suicide because they have a shitty experience. Which is to say, their experience of themselves is painful. Their experience in relationship to life is painful. Their experience in relationship to others is painful. And their whole experience as a whole gets so bad that they go, I'm out. Rather than... I'm going to stick it through, and likely there are other factors, not just the pain, but their reaction to the pain. I'm in so much pain, the only thing I can see to do is to off myself, so then that becomes the, the only option, this is what I want, and coupled with this idea of an option to end themselves is an, probably an excruciatingly, a very strong drive that that is something that they need to do. Need to do need see I, I bring that up because need can be applied to things so say so I brought up a few things now each one of these distinctions could bear some scrutiny for example I feel shitty about myself great what is a self Bet you never thought about that. Well, it's just me. Yeah, but what's it made of? People don't know what their selves are made of and how to create themselves in a certain way. And, and I think people also don't recognize that there's consequences to certain ways of thinking and behaving and also what they assume is true about them, what they assume is true about life, and what they assume is true about other people and everything else what they assume is actually true 
dominates their experience of themselves in such a way that like that's what creates their experience people are out of touch this is this is more I, the more straight to the point people are out of touch with creating their experience we usually think our experience is caused by some other force like somebody else and it can, can easily be seen that way if somebody especially if somebody with a much rougher childhood than i ever had is like, well, clearly, these external forces are causing me great pain, because they are. Like, maybe somebody's beating me or something like that. There's intent to hurt there, so of course I'm going to get hurt. And more than likely, I'm going to create very strong assumptions about myself, my own self-worth, my own self-value, my own self-esteem, that are then going to become my experience, which could be really, 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 really shitty. This is a possibility. But what I'm saying is that people don't know, they assume that their experience is their self and they don't know what a self is and so they like, people likely feel helpless to do anything about it. So I think it would be useful if somebody is in a rough situation and or if you're in a rough situation and you can try to get what a self is because maybe it's not something that you are, but something that you're doing, which means that if it's something you're doing, you could change it. But if it's not something you're doing, then it's something that is or just exists, and then it's very fixed. And likely you won't be able to discover what the real case is unless you question it yourself. So I would invite you to question, well, what is a self? You want to end this self? Good. Pause that for a moment. At least wait another few weeks or whatever and get what you are first then you decide and i'm not i'm not saying go off yourself i am not a fan of suicide i you know i'd rather you don't do that and i don't that's is not my keep me out of your shit basically I'm, I'm not part of that i don't recommend it at all all right one so what is a self if you want to end yourself figure out what the fuck that is before you go ahead and don't do that two you know life is so terrible yeah well why don't you also figure out what life is like what is a life because people think okay i have a life it is something that i'm living and it's really 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 shitty well what is it then like where is a life what is a life what's it made of does a does a rock have a life no you have a life so then what's the difference between you and a rock kind of thing see what is your life made of likely and if you can grasp the nature of what it's made of as if you know your life is mostly concepts about stuff that has happened and ideas about where it's going and then coupled with that those concepts and ideas is who you are in relationship to those ideas and this interplay seems to help generate a person and an experience of a life and your experience of life may be really really shitty now and you may not feel a capacity to to change that however i am inviting you to consider that if you could perhaps discover what a life is, what it's made of, like what's its nature, how does it function, then you might have a capacity to do something about it rather than just replay the same experience over and over and over again. And turn your life from something that's shitty into something that's not shitty. You know, have different thoughts about your life and who you are in relationship to your life. Yeah? Um... Yeah. Tell you a story. You know, imagine, if you will, a person. I, I remember I remember a time where I had some really bad experiences about myself. And it seems seemed to have come off of a let's just say it seems to have come off of a dream that I had where I looked myself in the mirror in the dream. And then, and, and I like finally saw like everything that was there. And then I, I, 
my memory is I came out of this dream and like my reality fell apart. It was very uncomfortable for a while. Very uncomfortable. I don't mean a little uncomfortable. I mean extremely uncomfortable. And part of this discomfort was huge emotional pain. Now likely, I surmise that this emotional pain has been with me my whole life. I just ignored it, suppressed it, and tried to pretend like it wasn't there. And it all came home to roost, like all at once. And man, that was a pain factory. Yeah, I experienced that. And uh, coupled with this pain, I did have these thoughts of like, man, I want out of this shit. I'm done with this. This is bullshit. I'm done. AKA, like, get me out of here. AKA, you know, <laughs> goodbye, right? Now, one of the things I have going for me, or had going for me, is that I am clear, or was clear, that no matter what my experience is doing, I'm okay. I am always okay, because my experience went to shit, but my experience is not me. My experience is what I experience. Do you see the difference? I experience stuff. So no matter what the experience is, and this one was very bad, I was still there. My body was fine. I was fine. My experience was not fine, you see? And so I was able to sit in the pain and deeply question its nature. Like, what is it about? Why am I in so much pain? What, what is this about? Why am I so afraid of, like, my own demise? Like, I'm afraid I'm going to die here. This is really bad, and I'm in a bunch of emotional pain. What's it about? What's the real cause behind this? You see, and I started to discover some assumptions about things. For one assumption, for example, was I got, like, oh, I thought that people were automatically against me. They're not automatically against me. I was like, oh, and I was able to let that go. And suddenly my relationship to other people shifted a little bit, you see, but in a real way. They're no longer against me, which means if other people are against me, guess how I have to be? How are you when somebody's against you? Do you fight back? Do you cower? Do you, you see, you react to how people are. And if, and if you're in a group of people and they're all against you, how are you going to be, right? So I had, not knowing it, had, 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 I was holding people, assuming that people were against me. So then I have to then hide, I have to maneuver, I have to pretend like I'm a nice guy all the time so that they like me, so that I don't feel threatened because they're against me. Like that's their default, they're against me. And that one of those, real, that realization alone helped change my relationship to people and thus my experience of myself changed also in one small way, and many more of those, you see? And so I was able to change my experience from one of extreme emotional pain to way less pain, you see? And then, and then life, life, my life as I live it, my experience, which if you look at life, what is that? Well, it has a lot to do with what you experience, right? You see, it is your experience of life. It's not like somehow your life is, like, where is your life? Are you going to go buy me one at Walmart, Tesco, Aldi, what? Can you go pick one up? It's not tangible. You can't go buy a life. You see, and it's particular to you. Where do you experience that? Well, in your experience. See, somebody else has their own life. Where is that? Kind of like in their own experience, their own mind. In this case, it's mostly conceptual. You see? So then my experience, my life changed because of realizing what I was assuming about the pain because the pain only exists in relationship to something. I have to be in pain about something, you see? Otherwise, why be in pain? Or if I'm afraid, say I'm extremely afraid, the fear itself is only in relationship to something else that's not the fear because otherwise it can't exist because you're afraid of what? If I'm af See? Afraid of... You know? And then people come up with, well, I'm afraid of the unknown. And I hear Peter talk about this. He's like, bullshit. You're not afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of 
something that you know is going to happen. He says there's tons of stuff that you don't know, and you're not afraid of it. You Do you know astrophysics? No. You afraid of that? No. You see? There's tons of things you don't know. You're not afraid of those. It's not the unknown. Fear is based on something known. Now, fear is relating to something. That's not the fear. Pain is relating to something. Otherwise, why be in pain? See? I'm in pain about my life. My life is shitty. I'm in pain about it. You see? And so if you can grasp and question what these things are about, you start to uncover the truth, and the truth is, usually there is no problem already. It's just what we create in our own minds to be the problem. Now, as I say that, I do want to acknowledge fully that this is not easy to do, and I mean not easy, like really not fucking easy at all, and... Some people have some serious challenges, like if you form up a mind from a young age in a fucked up, in a messed up situation, they are going to have some serious challenges, and I'm not saying that they could fix that. They may have a very hard time rewiring because things get hardwired, and then it's like in the brain, like a very hard to change. Okay? So say you have some of that stuff. Then... It could be like, here's these things that I have, rather than rejecting them or reacting to them, I let them be there. Okay, this is really crappy. Good. And I live with it. You know, the experience, I, I let the experience be there. I don't react to it. I don't try to hide it. You know, I don't try to act it out, suppress it, that's what we have. You don't act out, don't suppress. Experience it, feel it fully, let it be there. It is an experience that you're having. That is what that is, some experience. And if you can let it be that without doing anything with it, then you don't have to go down certain roads. Now, I know that that can be extremely challenging. Yeah? So I want to acknowledge that, the challenge. I, I cannot help you there. If you have those kinds of challenges, it may be good for you to go see somebody, a mental health professional, okay? If you're extremely challenged, call a suicide hotline. You know, that's what they're there for so that you can speak to another human being about that. And this is outside of my domain of expertise, so I can't really speak. I can just talk to, you know, when, ex when the experience goes topsy-turvy and it is really, really, really bad... If you can sit with that pain, good. Sit with that. Don't do anything about it. Just leave it alone. You see? And then you don't have to do anything with your body about that. You just be. Keep breathing. And you may find out, you know, you may be able to question and consider what's this pain about because it doesn't arise all by itself. Kind of thing. In these cases. Okay? And then... So that's what I have for you about suicide now. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it can be a challenge. You know, like I heard a story about this guy, you know, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is very famous for people going to jump, and there was a guy who actually, he jumped off the bridge and he lived. Usually people don't live when they do that because water turns into very hard substance when you hit it at a very fast speed. He jumped, he lived, and he said as soon as he let go of that railing, he knew he made a mistake. It's like, oh, fuck. Right? And then he lived. Shattered bones in his ankles, shattered bones up his spine, I'm pretty sure. And now he works for suicide prevention, helping people who are in a seriously rough way. You see? Um... So yeah, I, I don't have any experience like that that I can share with you that would that I think would be useful. But otherwise, I can invite you to consider to question these things and also that it is your mind that is the problem in this case if suicide is the thing. And, 
and lack of understanding of your own experience and a lack of consciousness so that you can consider how you can then create your experience rather than just be dominated by circumstance, which is how most people live. And then perhaps you could recraft your life into something that you find worthwhile and find the find the ways to do that because there are certain things that you can do that make a difference. So like having a discipline, for example, is, has, has good consequences for the mind. Keeping your word or having integrity also has good consequences for the mind and what you think of yourself and how you see yourself and the amount of trust you have in yourself. Doing things that challenge you and overcoming those challenges help give a boost to your self-esteem. You see, because you put yourself through something and then you grow a little bit. And it's like, oh, I, what, what I thought myself was capable of, I now is a little bit bigger. So rather than inverting yourself into its yourself kind of thing, you expand yourself outward to include more than just a myopic, turned-in, small experience and expand to something bigger that's not just you. You see, things like teamwork also help with that boost these things and other stuff and so you can find these things out and then go do them and see what the consequences are on your experience and move in that direction and recraft and rebuild yourself into something that that you think is worthwhile so anyway that's what i have for you on this topic I'm Brendan Lee with the BrendanLee.com in support of consciousness and skill worldwide. Till next time. If you want to get serious or a little bit serious, check the links in the description. I've got a free course. I've got a paid course. If you want to hire me to be your online coach, I will work with you online. Otherwise, if you want to get much more serious, come here, do a workshop. They will kick your butt. Okay? So thanks very much. I'm Brendan Lee. Till next time. Much love. Take care. Be well. And have fun. Ciao.